Hey folks, uh, welcome to episode three of the Duskfall Circulation War. Uh, my name is Ben Cherry, my pronouns are he, him. I am a Maltese Australian game designer and, uh, wait, is sound coming through? I don't know if it's coming through. That, mmm. Okay, there's, uh, I don't think my sound is coming through. Oh. Huh. Let me double check. Yeah, yeah, can can folks uh, quickly check on... We, we are cursed by, like, sound glitches. Yeah, <laughs> if it... Constantly. If my... It's, it's, the, the cops don't want us circulating. That, yeah, <laughs> I'm fair. <laughs> we, we are cursed by, like, sound I can hear everyone else. Can, can you hear me? Hold on. Yeah, no, we can, I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just my OBS. All right, whatever. Yeah, no, I can hear you just fine. Beautiful. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, where where was I? Um, I don't know. Something. I, I, I am Ben. Uh, that's good enough. Sorted. Uh, <laughs> Alex. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure, sure. Um, hey, I'm Alex. You can find me on lots of things in either JJam or Sylvios, um, depending on the platform. I wish I was more consistent. Um, <laughs> um, I am actually soon going back to doing part-time streaming, so that's exciting. Yay! Uh, I'll be doing a lot of like Subnautica playthroughs um, and some going through my Steam Lively playthroughs, which will be exciting. Um, aside from that, um, I'm still working on my magical space human a um, little interactive novel, and I will soon be doing commission artwork, so that'll be pretty fun too. Yay. Cool. So that's me. Cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, I think, Brandon, you're next in the cadence, right? Hi, everyone. I'm Brandon. Um, I write poetry, I write short stories. Uh, I am working on my own game right now called Sound Clash. Uh, about a world where uh, magic is real, but it can only be accessed if you can sing or play an instrument. Um, and most of my time right now is uh, dedicated to doing those things. Um, you can find me almost everywhere on the internet at The Rising Tides. That's uh, The Rising T I T H E S. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, Lavender, right? Hey, I'm Lavender, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm making a game called Mortally Bankrupt, which is where you play reality TV stars in a world watched by LG Tours, and that game is eating up all of my time and all of my life, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the CSS animation game has gotten better, which I feel like it can only be expected to. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, Melody. Hello, I am Melody. I am a den denizen of the deep internets. Uh, and uh, outside of that, I <laughs> I uh, write a lot of things. I do games design. Um, I'm looking for work. You should hire me. Um, I'm also a good editor, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, she, her pronouns. Um, come say hi. Yeah, and uh, what are you drinking? Or what were you drinking? Oh, um... V pure, which is Ooh. I got free from work. Uh, it does not taste as good as normal V. Um, I learned that out the hard way too, sadly. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like V's um, energy. Uh, sorry, like natural ingredients one. Like mother it's... was when it first started. It's not good. Uh... I'm not drinking it. It's free, and I need caffeine. <laughs> this uh, this this show food. is definitely not sponsored by V. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Let's uh, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with crew XP, uh, and by doing crew XP, we will also sort of go through a, a bit of a recap of the last session, uh, or at least the parts that are um, necessary for crew XP, and and we'll talk through what we did. So, does anyone want to give a a brief, uh, well, not necessarily brief, 
Does anyone want to give a, a recount of what we did? Um, can, I, can I say just, I don't know if I'll do the whole recount, but I need to say one thing. Yeah. Which is, the score went fine. It should not have. We should oh, yeah. have fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. Because we were... And, but, and the score was fine. And it was only when we stuck around afterwards that everything went to hell. <laughs> realistically, realistically, the reason it went so well is because Sabine rolled, like, what? You, you had, like, three rolls in of that. You rolled, like, five sixes. So, I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I got two crits in a row. It was yeah. amazing. So, chances with that, really. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, if so, it wasn't for Sabine, one of us would have been like thrown out a window or some shit. I mean, one of you... Someone else would have been stabbed through the eye. It's going to be dead, yeah. <laughs> one of you... A little bit of a spoiler on the recap, but one of you threw yourself Sorry. out a window, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so recap. Yeah, well, yeah. well, one of us got all of the sixes and all of the crits. One of us failed every single roll that they made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, bit, Melody. A bit of context. Yeah, do you want to take it away? We were like, yeah, so we wanted to distribute our um, seditious, uh, you know, propaganda magazines in a factory because we wanted to, like, get a foothold. Um, but it's seditious, and factory owners don't really like it when you call for the workers to overthrow them. So we had to figure out a way to do that, like, subtly. And so what we were doing was we dressed up as basically Slanishi cultists, like sex priests, kind of? I mean, I'm, I'm, it's hyperbole, but you know. Uh, and then we put our communist propaganda inside porn um, so that people could be doing the whole thing where they're like reading something that's legit, but inside it is something dodgy, except it's like, it's the other way around than what you'd expect. Yeah. Um, and then someone from the, the church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh, who we were impersonating, which is like a level four or five faction, showed up um, and saw us doing this. Uh, and then Seneca, like, anime-style seduced them. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. There was a whole, like, there was, like, a, something tri they tri she tripped over and, like, so mm -hmm. that they were, like, one on top of the other. Uh, and there was like blushing and like, you know, docky docky, like, and like um, yeah, sparkly eyes, bullshit, yeah, all that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And somehow we got away with it. I, oh, I yeah. Just, do you want me to keep going or does someone else want to take over? Uh, Lavender, why don't you take over what, uh, what happened to you next? Um. <laughs> Um, it was a good plan. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry, where did, did we leave off? I'm looking at chat oh. and at the crew sheet and. So um, we succeeded in like deterring the priest and like kind of like to a certain extent, and then like we were giving out our stuff mm. and. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. then, like, I think the next step was, because you were impersonate, you were kind of, like, doing the, the what is it, um, the type of acting, method acting, like, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I just got pulled all the way into, mm. like, I am a middle, like, like, a mid-level priest talking to their superior. Mm. And I just mm. kept getting in talks with them, and I was just, like, committing to the act so that they wouldn't believe that we fucked up or anything, but somehow I got caught anyway. And then um, there was eye stabbing that very nearly happened. It but was, there was, was a cover fire. Yeah. Um, That's right. And that kind of broke the spell that they put on themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they go like. They have the climbing equipment that goes out immediately, hooks onto a railing, but the railing, like, I, like, tumble and don't do it quite right, so then I end up, like, stuck, holding onto rope over pieces of turning machinery oh, that if I drop off of, will yeah. I'll just get eaten by gears and machines and crap. It was a bad time. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a very, very bad time. And, uh, then we had, um... Then there was ghosts. Yeah, then, then there was ghosts. <laughs> so, so Kane used uh, special Spidey Sense fear powers, um, realized you're in danger, ran over there, only to see you about to die. 
Um, so doing the only thing that Kane can do best, uh, try to summon ghosts to possess and hopefully get you out of the situation. Um, didn't didn't go exactly as planned. Uh, there was lots of shrapnel and, and angry, vengeful ghosts, <laughs> and uh, an old rival of mine happened to appear, which was not that fun. Hmm. <laughs> Again, I wonder who that may have been. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that may have helped us previously. Um, so yeah, I think we ended up. So who it was? Sinico was pretty much knocked out completely. Uh, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you were knocked out completely. I had basically tried to calm down the ghost. And we'd barely gotten out there with the skin of our teeth out of that awful goddamn situation. And yeah, we had someone passed out. Someone very nearly died. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of us pretty yeah. traumatized, except for Sabine. I was fine. I yes, yeah, Sabine totally was fine. fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I lost stress, I'm pretty sure. That's right, because you, you rolled a, a crit on the stress. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, on, on the, the, the... Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I had a pretty good night. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, in uh, in the spirit of that, let's uh, let's look at at the the crew XP. So let's go to table view here, um, and uh, so read this. yeah, yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna go through them? Yeah, I can take care of all of them, and then we can talk about it as a group. Yeah, sounds um, good. At the end of each session, for each item below, we mark one XP, or we mark two if we did it multiple times. Did we acquire product supply, execute clandestine or covert sales, or secure new territory? It's up to the floor. Does? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't technically. Yeah. That's what I was we thinking. We didn't technically acquire anything or make a sale, did we? <laughs> but I think we did. We executed what? covert sales. I think for the purposes of the question, like I don't think it matters if we got money in return. Mm -hmm. Like mm. we were we were securing customers, basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like right. my right. question is, does that count? Does the just does the distribution count as a sale? Plus the fact that we now have this entire location full of. Uh, committed fans of our newspaper yeah, account as yeah. uh, territory. I think it does. Mm. Like, it's not turf. Yeah. But, or, I mean, mm. it, it technically and mechanically yeah. is turf because you, you yeah. took the claim turf. Um, mm. I, I think it counts, yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, what, one for that, do you folks reckon? Yeah, one I, I think, think so. sounds pretty valid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, who wants to be marking uh, XP for this? I'm on it. Okay, beautiful. Um, and next one. Contend with challenges above your current station. Did we do that? Uh, yeah, what? Ecstasy of the um, Flesh is like... <laughs> is like... Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. What? It's like four, right? Tier four, yeah. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, he definitely and it wasn't just work. like a rando either. It was safe. I think they were pretty highly like they were a fairly important person. Yeah, they were a jubilant, which I'm I'm imagining as being like kind of not quite a cardinal. Like we're not dealing with like that level of ridiculousness, but I would say that they're definitely like a bishop, right? Like they they mm -hmm. they are in charge of a um, a large church. Um, and they can make our life pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. bad. Like, it's it's bad news to have them on your trail. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that you should um, you should take... Actually, I reckon take two for that, because the, that the, yeah, the ghost yeah. shenanigans you did, like, mm -hmm. they, they could cause problems with other groups, like... Um, the um what are they got the spirit wardens and folks like that so yeah I, I definitely think that that's yeah. a two yeah it's definitely risky doing that mm -hmm. yeah um okay so next one did we bolster our crew's reputation or develop a new one reputation is that we are subversive subversive i think so i feel like we did yeah. you know yeah. I mean, we, we, 
there was that really successful role where we got a bunch of people who were like, yeah, we'll help you out. We're going to be so helpful that it'll probably be a problem later on. Yeah, for yeah, um, pretty much. Weaver, right? The Yeah, uh, yeah. A whole yeah. bunch of loyal kids. It's like, woo, great. Yeah, yeah. Who definitely aren't going to get, like, in the line of fire or, like, get way too enthusiastic yeah, or something. Yeah, definitely not sacrificial 12-year-olds. I mean... Well, let's, Ooh, let's well. hope not. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not keen on that, <laughs> so... <laughs> They'll just get us in trouble, you know? They'll be like, yeah. our cool friends who sell the magazines, they live over here. We'll be like, um... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, I think you, you so definitely got So, I want to say yes for that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. So that fills the track. Um, yep. And so you've got an advance. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the last one... Did we express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of our crew? I mean, drives, absolutely. The whole thing was about our drives. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would say, I would say, and goals. Like, I, I mean, I'd definitely say at least one point. Um, uh, I mean, but there were also some cool, like, things of the inner conflict, and especially in regards to, I can't remember the character's name, Nyrix? Nyrix, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, and that 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 immediately like created like a potential conflict between um, Seneca and um, oh gosh, what's the character's name again? Sorry, Kane. Kane. Yeah. Um, oh, so there's definitely going to be some fallout from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember, like, when that ended, wasn't uh, Seneca's only sense like. This seems familiar, but I don't know why. And then I just immediately passed out. Yeah, because because Seneca doesn't actually know that Nyrix is a ghost, right? Like, yeah. Not necessarily, at least. Maybe you have like suspicions or that you think something's weird, but um, yeah. Yeah. So I I kind of I kind of want to say two points for that one for the goals and drives and one for like mm. we were laying the foundations for the conflict. I think so. Yeah, yeah that that <laughs> feels very fair to me. Um, awesome. So you've got an advance. Um, so where would you like to spend that? Ah, oh, so many choices. Mm. Hmm. So how so, advance is working <clears throat> since we're doing this for the first time for the crew? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, I know you. Ask. Yeah. <laughs> um, how it works is, the part that people always forget, is that we get, actually get cash when we advance. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, sorry. It's oh, coin in this game. Yeah. Oh, cool. that's right. You did. Yeah, yeah. I always, I had that, somehow misread that, that to think that was when we go up in tier. But you're right. Yeah. No, huh. that's good. <laughs> um, upon crew advance, it actually works the other way. You have to like spend a bunch of coin yeah. to go up in right. tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, upon crew <clears throat> advance, each PC gets stash equal to our tier plus two. We are tier zero, oh. but each of us should mark two stash. Two stash, nice. Okay. And then after that, we <clears throat> get to either pick one um, special ability from the crew, or we get to mark two upgrade boxes. Yeah. Anyone got any immediate thoughts on that? Lots like, of choices. Yeah, there is. <clears throat> what are the abilities? <clears throat> I guess what do we want to do in the short term? Like, and what do we need in the short term? Um, I remember hmm. at some point during like our first game, we were talking about getting like a cohort crew of like kids or something oh cool mm -hmm. and we yeah. could buy a cohort yeah. now couldn't we because that's two yeah. points yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean, and, that'd be and cool. i mean you you do have weaver right like you, you've already we've established that um that npc right so we know that weaver exists and she already okay. thinks that she's part of the crew you could just straight up <laughs> upgrade weaver and weaver's friends to be yeah. uh, a cohort, right? Straight into it. Mm -hmm. 
And that'd be that'd be pretty good as is it um what are the runners and spot, spotters and that kind of thing? Is it, that's not rooks, is it? Rooks uh, is like thugs. I think it is rooks because there's thugs. There is a um, a gang type oh, okay. which is uh, is thugs. I can't remember what the different names are. Let's let's have a look here. Um, uh, where are they? Oh, here we go. Rooks. Oh, okay. So adepts are scholars, tinkerers, occultists, and chemists. Rooks are con artists, spies, and socialites. Rovers are sailors, carriage drivers, and scavengers. Skulks are scouts, infiltrators, and thieves. And thugs are killers, brawlers, and roustabouts. I feel like the kids would make a really good group of skulks. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I could see skulks, yeah. um, rooks, or what was the middle one? Um. Uh, rovers, sailors, rovers. carriage drivers, and scavengers. Yeah. Good, yeah, I mean, they'd be pretty good for transporting stuff around for us. Yeah, I could see any of those three. Um, oh, definitely honestly, not having things right like to transport, I was going to say, it was actually kind of good for us. It takes us like, a lot of out of, like, a lot of the... I don't know. I don't have to quite put it, but I think that's kind of... Well, it means we can get our stuff around, like, mm-hmm. more easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And safely, too. That's, yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it takes a lot of that, like, risk out of, like, us delivering stuff. I mean, based upon my last thing, <laughs> we can see us handing things in person. It's, it's very risky. Mm. So I don't know it's whether it's actually worth getting them for our transport. That's, I mean, that's a good point. Because they know that, like, they're locals in a way that we're not. Yeah, yeah. They're all locals. Yeah. And um, at least Weaver, like, is actually has a job, right? So... Mm. Um, so Weaver specifically, and probably Weaver's friends, they wouldn't be seen as, like, necessarily urchins, right? They're a little bit yeah. above that level, right? So uh, I could see them acting very, um, effectively in any of those three roles, because mm. they're, they're pretty much as unassuming as you're gonna get, because <laughs> they're, like, they're working-class kids who actually have jobs, so, like... <laughs> yeah, that's, and live in the area. Yeah, and people that's... Know. Exactly, right? That's such a good, like, spot to be, um, for you folks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we choose one and then want a different one later, we can always upgrade them, can't we, and get a new type for them? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we can we... add a new type if we... Yeah, like, add a later point. <clears throat> those three i would like to pick rooks because as hawkers we have an upgrade that's exclusive to hawkers mm-hmm. where we have elite rooks which mm-hmm. means we can only spend one upgrade box and we get to upgrade all their rolls by one die cool which Sounds is good be. because um having cohorts at tier zero is actually really bad because oh um they their scale is zero and their quality is zero, which means like every time they're rolling with you, they're always rolling two dice and taking the lowest, which kind of sucks. But mm. cohorts are nice because they can grow with you as a crew and then they can get kind of out of control. <laughs> which is part of the fun, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're adding like two or three extra dice to all of your rolls and it's really good. Wow. Sweet. That sounds pretty, so, that sounds pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like we already have it, so, like, and we don't have, like, any other flashy ideas in mind, so. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, okay, so I'll, I'll bring the, um, the PDF onto, onto the screen, so, uh, when you create a cohort, you choose their, um, their type, so in, in this instance, this is a gang, not an expert, um, and the gang type we've chosen is rooks, so if someone wants to, um, start noting this down yep you are you're just you're just all over this today lavender Um, (laughs) i'm all about this this is beautiful um so they're rooks um and next we have to give them um one or two edges and an equal number of floors so um i'll i'll quickly read out the edges and floors for you folks and you can you can discuss uh how you believe weaver and um this will be like, I think, yeah, scale zero is like one or two people. So this is probably like Weaver and um, like one of their friends, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And and it'll grow from there if you want to um, grow it later. Cool. Um, yeah. 
So the edges, we have fearsome. The cohort is terrifying in aspect and reputation. Independent, the cohort can be trusted to make good decisions and act on their own initiative in the absence of direct orders. Loyal, the cohort can't be bribed or turned against you. And tenacious, the cohort won't be deterred from a task. I want to go with one of the latter two, like the last Same. two. Same. Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine 12 year olds making good decisions, especially and not I these. I can't ones. also, um, like, Imagine them being super scary or terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> what were we going to say, Brent? <laughs> I mean, it's it's funny in theory, but I think the last two are kind of more yeah. practical. What, what were yeah. you going to say, Brandon? I was going to say the same. That oh, okay, like, cool. if we're dealing with kids, uh, there's only a, like a certain level of believability that we're working with. Yeah. Also, yeah. I just, yeah. I just think that um, in particular, uh, loyal is. Um, kind of interesting from a narrative perspective that we know that they won't be uh mm. like they can't be asked to be put in uh compromising situations that would turn them against us but surely there are other ways that that can happen and i would like to see what um mm. i would like to see at some point later in the game that we need to like bail weaver out because they were standing up for us yeah absolutely yeah. right i think the idea is great and um, i don't know like i think Tenacious could end up getting them in bad situations. Mm -hmm. Like, they could do the task for us at the cost of, like, mm. their own sanity or their own life, etc. Mm. Whereas I, I think kind of Loyal has, like, more benefits than it immediately appears to us. Mm. I mean, Tenacious would be, like, the Stranger Things kids or the Goonies or something. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and they would, would definitely get killed because yeah. they're yeah. like, in the dark. Exactly. And I like loyal because it's just like they've kind of like devoted themselves to us. That's going to be like their whole purpose as these like little 12 year olds is like we're going to do good. And I think that kind of like narratively works mm. really well. Yeah. Um, it's really cute as well. <laughs> we, can, we can go through the flaws as well because if there's like two flaws you want to take, then we can like go back and say you take both of the bottom edges or we can figure it out that way. Um, but like definitely you know loyal. Sorry? <laughs> I think you know the sort of players. Oh yeah, we yeah. Are. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I know the sort of players you folks are by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the flaws we've got here: principled, the cohort has an ethic uh, or um, values that they won't betray. Uh, savage, the cohort is excessively violent or cruel, or, and cruel. Sorry, unreliable, the cohort isn't always available due to other obligations, uh, stupefaction from their vices, etc and wild the cohort is drunken debauched and loud mouthed now is anyone else thinking, I, I hope oh, not. sorry go, go for it no. oh I, I was just gonna say now that that last one wild uh, i don't believe the children are drunken no. or debauched <laughs> but i can definitely see them being you know they're they're 13 year old communists right so so yeah. <laughs> i can see them oh, being yeah i can see them definitely being wild in a certain way right like so so yeah, i don't discount that one different. offhand um uh, sure yeah. sure um uh, i think like i was gonna say unreliable makes sense based upon their like obligations to work mm -hmm. like narratively yeah. that makes sense like they can't always do stuff for us because it's not like they can exactly leave the factory job like totally unnoticed and not get punished for it um, so I think that that makes sense. Um, but I, I, I'm hearing wild, that sounds really fun. <laughs> I, I want to pose a principle because I think narratively it'd be super interesting if like, if later on we have to compromise on our beliefs and they're like, what are you doing? We looked yeah. up to you guys. I um, like that. Yeah, I like, I like that. that a lot. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. if they, yeah, and if it, they it like, get betrayed or something, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's, that's, that's a nice sort of, like, narrative counterpoint as well, because, like, you folks, you left the Ink Rakes because you were idealists, and the Ink Rakes mm. weren't, you know, up to your standards. If you have <laughs> your own smaller cohort within, within your, like, because you folks were definitely, you used to be a cohort of the Ink Rakes, right? Like... If yeah, yeah. in a, in the previous TV show before this <laughs> show, you folks were one of the cohorts, and now this is the spin-off to that show because people were like, 
in season two, everyone just paid attention to them. Like all the fans on Reddit just loved that <laughs> cohort, right? So, so this yeah. is the spin-off show, right? Um, We're the spin-off, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the like, way, way the more successful <laughs> uh, spin-off, right? Like the the cult favorite spin-off. Um, I mean, we've got we've got violence, we've got ghosts, we've got Seneca. Like... Yeah, that's it. You're you're the Torchwood. You're the Torchwood to like the yeah, vanilla the Doctor Who, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely keen on that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I can definitely see Principled. I also think Unreliable uh, or Wild would be fun as well, right? Like you can definitely go two floors here. Um, so what are you folks thinking? I. Hmm. So you go. You go. It's so, like I'm thinking lots of things. Um, first of all, as I think, actually, from a like character perspective, unreliable doesn't work because okay. Weaver strikes me as the kind of kid who would duck Just... work to do stuff for us. Mm. <laughs> and uh, they don't I... get into trouble. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Yeah. But like I that... like. I thought you, you go. Sorry. Sorry. Like I, I was gonna say I like how that may potentially play out because it means that our trouble is we need to um, <clears throat> help Weaver get out of a mess with the exact same place that we already have all of these other people who trust us. Mm. Uh, but I also really like the combination of Wild and Principled because I like the idea of it's like confronting us very loudly and going, what the fuck are you doing? Why did you do the thing? <laughs> And I think, but yeah, I, if we are uh, going to think we'll go for wild in principle, it would make sense to then give them wild as well, because they're, you know, kids that are going off and doing all these yeah. kind of underground things, mm. thinking that they're the real heroes and they're breaking all the rules and they're disregarding they their job and they're doing all those sort of stuff. So, like, if we're going to go with the combination, those two would work really well, yeah. They haven't got, they haven't learned party discipline, like, revolutionary <laughs> discipline, like... Yeah. There's no yeah. Lenin, like, you know, like, kind time. of breathing down the back of their neck. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, I just oh, like the idea of Wild mostly because they don't actually know theory very well, so I think that they're really just winging it all of the time anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going with, like, the, gut feelings. The kids yeah. of today, millennials getting all fucked up on, like, <laughs> wing theory <laughs> and Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'm, I'm keen on that. Principled and wild. That sounds super fun to me. Uh. <laughs> also, in, in terms of the unreliable thing and like Weaver skipping work, I can totally imagine Weaver being like, oh shit, I need to go help the gang. Hey, other kid who lives in my neighborhood, just pretend to be me at work for the day. Yeah. You get paid. And the foreman is just like, it's a kid. I, I don't know. Maybe it's the same kid. I don't care. Mm. It doesn't pay enough attention. <laughs> if if yeah. we are then going to go with wild and principled, I think maybe tenacious might work better. Um, only because it seems a bit silly for them to be like loyal to us. But if they get quest, if, we, if it comes to a point where they want to question us or what we've done, loyal might yeah. con conflict with that. Yeah, that's fair. So maybe mm. like tenacious, and because they are kind of wild, it makes sense that they'll like stick to a task through the end because they're kind of like you know yeah little champion, I, little champion communists. I don't think that loyal would necessarily override principled. Um, I can mm. see because they can't be bribed or turned against you, right? So so that means that outside influences can't act on them. Inside influences right. mm. can definitely still do that, right? So. Uh, I can definitely see them, um, if you folks screw up, right, they're loyal to the cause, right? They're loyal to what they believe to be is, like, your ideal, right? And if if you go against that, then I can totally see them, if they're loyal, tenacious, and principled wild, I can totally see that being a point of conflict still. Um, yeah. And then, okay. like, holding us for account and stuff. Yeah, exactly, right? And and loudly doing that in front of everyone and being a, a <laughs> real pain in the ass. Um, I, we've, we've only met these kids once. For a second, I already love them. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are my, yeah, yeah. Sweet, my sweet babies. <laughs> the, the only thing yeah. you have to watch out for is the inevitable fan clamor for them to get their own <laughs> spin-off series so <laughs> yeah. you know it's so, totally fitting. It, it, it is <laughs> um awesome okay so those four those four 
like two edges, two floors. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Um, and that is that is the all oh, there is to cohort creation. Um, so back to uh, you've got that's that's all of your um, upgrades and stuff. Uh, and now we have to deal with uh, entanglements, right? Uh, why did I move the PDF away? Um, we still need it. Okay, so um, so entanglements. Uh, how this works is we we look at your uh, your crew's current uh, heat and wanted level. Uh, the heat determines the like the table that we roll on essentially, and the current wanted level determines how many dice we're rolling for it. So currently you are on wanted zero, so that's that's good, because um, you're going to roll two dice and take the lowest result, and the lower results are always better. And these entanglements are like things that go wrong during the downtime, and they will sort of describe the scene that will go into and set the general tone for this downtime. Because um, <laughs> as you can see, they they go from things like gang trouble and like the cops, you know, asking around the place. Um, there's like the possibility of ghosts coming to haunt you, which is definitely topical, uh, all the way up to arrest, right? Like where the, the blue coats will just come, bust down your door and, and actually just arrest members of your crew. Um, that's not possible yet because you don't, um, actually, no, that is possible. You've got six heat, but it's unlikely because you're going to be rolling zero dice. Um, we picked up a lot of heat. You did. That was <laughs> <I'd forgotten. laughs> that was a ridiculous amount of yeah, heat. Um, think about that. There's a for that. To to remove heat. Mm. Yeah. And especially yeah. the spider. The spy, do you have the thing that gives you a bonus for that? I took Luke Luke's shipwrecker. Oh ability, yeah. So that cool, I could cool. scavenger uniforms. Nice. Um. Cool. All right. So someone needs to roll. Needs to roll for entanglements. Who would like to do that? Um, I, I, will go really go I just realized. I just realized none of these are. There's no good outcome. <laughs> no, no. There's not. There's not. It's <laughs> no. entanglements are all bad. Like no matter what, yeah, they're well, bad. Yeah, but like um, the heat zero to three ones are less bad, and they're the only ones I've had to roll previously. I think uh, I, I feel like Sinica, you are our like our face person, so maybe you should roll. Yeah, I I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, let's uh, let's see the dice. I I how actually is this working? I don't know how you roll uh, on these sheets. Uh, oh, okay, uh, so. Go to the the Keener's, um faction sheet, and there's just a button for mm-hmm. roll engagement. Um, uh, wait, no engagement. Engagement. We need oh, yeah. we need entanglements. Uh, is uh, it just a fortune roll? Then I guess. Um, yeah, just if what if what uh, if wanted level is zero, roll two dice and keep the lowest result. Yeah, so you can probably just go roll fortune and roll number of dice zero, no bonus dice. Um, uh, number of dice zero. Yes. Okay. Uh, Come on. I think we can actually click the wanted button. Oh, can you? Uh, yeah, it's coming up ooh. as uh, highlighted in red. Yeah. Um, oh okay. yeah, Luke, Luke just said. That. Yeah. That you, we can. You click. Uh, I, I think it's wanted rather than heat. But yeah, because yeah. the heat's not lighting up. So yeah, you can just click the wanted. Um, word on the the faction sheet. Also, hi Luke. Okay. Bonus dice zero. Yeah. <gasps> oh no, we take the lower lowest. Lowest. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeez. So our options here are, are demonic notice or show of force. So <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'll just quickly read these. Um, demonic notice, a demon approaches the crew with a dark offer, accept their bargain, hide until it loses uh, interest, forfeit three rep, or deal with it another way. 
or uh, show of force. A faction with whom you have negative status makes a play against your holdings. Give them one claim or go to war. Drop to negative three status. If you have no claims, lose one hold instead. Honestly, oh, I, I don't want to take away your claim so soon, nor do I think that the the story is developed enough to go to war. So uh, I, I don't think show of force makes sense. Um, demonic notice, though, is is gonna get all the demons is definitely a thing, right? Like, that's, that's pretty intense. Um, yeah. I, I don't necessarily have um, a hook for that. Does anyone have the, an idea? I, I don't off the top of my head, but the other thing is they don't, it doesn't actually have to happen straight away, I don't think. Like, you could, you can bring this up, like, a little bit later on or something if you Yeah, um, that's true. That's true. But, I mean, like, if we have a cool idea now, like, I mean, we did just fuck around with ghosts. Do demons and ghosts have much to do with each other? I can't remember the kind of metaphysics there. They're sort of, like, um, like, metaphysical opposites is the thing. Like, they're, um, <laughs> demons, demons are too alive, ghosts are not alive enough. Um, hmm. so, yeah, that I, I don't, personally, I don't see them as being particularly entwined. Uh-huh. Uh, and the church and demons don't like each other, right? Maybe a demon is like, hey, I saw you guys fucking with the church. Let's get on that shit, do that some more or something. I don't know if they are necessarily against each other. I think um, I, I think that they're not on great terms, but the church is generally anti-ghost. Um, mm. But, I mean, demons um, also do threaten their entire concept of, like, humanity first, so... Yeah, maybe maybe they're not chill with demons. Um, <laughs> demons are also um, a very Aruvian thing, so I can see them like not being keen from an imperial standpoint. Um, you're gonna say Melody? Uh, I was just sort of noticed in chat. Um, I think uh, Ash was suggesting maybe just um, yeah, like you can always hold on to it and see what happens during the downtime. So maybe one of us will do something super weird and spooky and or like just poorly thought out or something and there'll be a perfect opportunity mm. Mm. that's a good idea yeah okay let's see what you folks do during downtime and then uh then we'll take it from there um okay so downtime um how this works again pdf on the screen um so between scores your crew spends their time um basically doing whatever they want. Um, this is like, this is, for for most crews, this would be when they would like attend to um, personal matters. But I guess for your crew, it would, it's both a little bit personal matters and actually just like doing your job, like doing the parts of your job, which aren't scores, right? Like, cause you folks have to have time to write as well. Um, but yeah. that, doesn't necessarily have to be on screen, right? We can just, we it can be that kind of like um, Grey's Anatomy style, like you know, you you folks are doctors, but you don't actually do that much medicine, right? Like we we don't need to actually see all that much of what your job is. We just need to see what's what's cool. We um, we mostly emote. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so when you're not at war, uh, you have two downtime actions each, um, and those downtime actions are acquire an asset, uh, which is basically like scrounging up something that would be cool to use, uh, and it's temporary. That can be like a special item, uh, a special cohort, um, a vehicle, uh, a service, um, and those are good things to like set up for your next score if you have an idea of what that's going to be. Um, the the next one is a long term project, so you can start a long term project and say this is something I want to do and something I want to be true in the uh, in the fiction. I'll give you a um, an amount of ticks on a clock until that thing comes to pass, uh, and then you can make a roll towards that and describe like how you work towards making that true and that will give you ticks on the clock um then you've got recover 
which is um, doing that for, like, basically working towards um, the clock to heal. Um, and uh, then there's reduce heat, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and train, which you can get some extra XP just for free. And indulging of vice. This is how you get rid of stress um, and you engage with your vice and vice purveyor. Um, so, yeah. Um, does anyone have um, any specific ideas of, of what they necessarily want to do? Um, maybe it will work best to have... Um, uh, Melody, you have played Blades in a previous campaign before, right? Yeah. Um, cool. Maybe it will be best to have either um, some some Sabine or um, Stavril downtime actions first, just so that, um, like, Brandon and Alex, you can see um, how this, yeah. this shit manifests in play. Yeah. I want to just check, because um, I'll probably be indulging my vice, because I do have some strength. Um... Uh, Levin, we talked about like uh, originally. I was gonna, it was gonna, I was gonna go like writer's critique circle, and then we talked about like this weird like kind of like music um, kind of thing. Had mm. yeah. What did what did you end up going with? Um, or did you have something else? It could be either or both. Or um, I, I like the music thing. Yeah, I like the music thing too. It, it taps into the fact that I do music. Yeah, so nice. I'm just like, yeah, I'm imagining <laughs> how that would actually sound. Um, yeah, awesome. So, for those who aren't in our Twitter DMs, uh, <laughs> which is many people, I imagine. Weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> Funny that. Slide into my DMs right now, people. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to link you to the conversation. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking of is like they play a note and then like start attuning to the frequency of the music and like push that frequency through the ghost field so that they start having control over like certain parts of the music with their mind and like they can control what the reverberations are doing and there's like more control over the harmonic content and they can start doing a thing where they start incorporating the reverberations back into their instruments and then they make another sound with that and then it's just an internal process where they can start weaving weird sometimes unpleasant sounds together hmm. like cool it. yeah i'm gonna yeah. go with that uh and i might put up my hand to do something immediately because like the last thing we saw from last game was it was like kind of like a um, throwback to the initial scene where we'd been socializing in our lair. Except like pretty much everyone was like unconscious or like, I don't know, possessed or injured. Uh, and yeah. Sabine just like kind of like put on a big ass like military coat and like goes out into the night, presumably to go like find a club where this music is happening and like, get, you know, um, had like kind of get blasted, uh, plastered and like, listen to some weird music and dance and that kind of stuff okay um so i might indulge my vice yeah i think i might do that too now people at home might be saying hey lavender you trauma out that means you don't have any stress <laughs> but i am more clever and more versed in the ways of blades and i know that if i overindulge <laughs> i will get xp <laughs> so oh my god <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna indulge my vice with Sabine, both for the fictional, like, because it makes sense. Because we yeah. all yeah. end up together. Okay, sick. And because it'll give me XP. So, so is it like, I'm like, like walking down the street alone and then suddenly you're there too? Like You've caught up, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, very good. Um, <clears throat> okay, do you folks have like a name? Cause I'm guessing something like this sounds like, to me at least, that it, um, it occurs in Night Market. Um, yeah. Do you have an idea of like the name of the club uh, or um, or the purveyor? Because we can just put that straight down on your um, 
your character sheets as being like um, mm -hmm. your your vice purveyor. Um, yeah, I don't off the top of my head. Hey, chat, do you have any ideas? Yeah. I, I have yeah. I have an I have an idea of an aesthetic which is kind of like it's a bit anachronistic in that it's kind of like an industrial club like and meets, oh yeah meets, meets like that scene from the second matrix movie where everyone's like raving in the cavern except it's like juxtaposed with it's oh. in like a fucking warehouse or something yeah yeah um, industrial <laughs> so so one of my favorite things about night market is it's like weird scaffolding um like many tiered um many tiered uh, platforms that sort of the entire district is built on different levels of boardwalk um, oh, cool. all, all the way like up into um, like several stories above the general hubbub of um, of Duskwall and also down below as well like it goes down into these old like gothic beautiful marble tunnels and um, and sort of like underground subway station style things Hell so yeah. i can totally yeah, imagine okay. yeah like a, a subterranean um i'm i'm getting i'm getting like images in my mind of um the wicked and the divine when um mm -hmm. uh when baphomet and uh like when, when baphomet's doing like his shit in the um in the tunnels um so yeah yeah I can definitely see amazing. like a club underground, like an actual underground, um, you know, <laughs> gothic industrial club. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. I have very, another yeah. weird detail. Yeah. Um, I think they have like braided vines of black lotus instead of like bead curtains in certain places. Oh, that's and, sick. Like, black lotus is like, if you wanted to ruin everything, you could just like snip a bit of that and put it in your pipe and like actually smoke it. And it, like people probably do that. It probably has to be replaced and maintained all the time. <laughs> or it just grows unnaturally quickly to replace yeah. itself, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like more um, so that. That's cool. I like um, that better. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just making notes for this. So like a black lotus beaded curtains, um, mm -hmm. gothic industrial underground club in night market um and uh this is the place where they play do you have a name for like the the type of music like the genre um yep echo 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 music. oh cool um actually i think there's there's a name um in um in the blades sheets which is something echoes um what what where did I see that? Where did I see that? Um, I think you ghost echoes. No, no, I'm not thinking of ghost echoes. Um, does anyone have a, a good name um, in an echoey sense? For the for the club. Yeah, for the club. Resonance. Oh yeah, just like a a one cool. word just called resonance. You know, I'm up cool. for that. Yeah, they could be like going down to the res. Like it has that little like sharp little <laughs> big name too. Yeah, I'm I'm keen. All right, cool. Uh, the resonance or just resonance. Sorry, that's the uh, that's the club name. <laughs> gotta get it right. Uh, yeah, you, know, you gotta like, get it right. Yeah. These are, these are like these are hipsters. You know, you can't. <laughs> they'll, they'll know if you're a poser. God, Duskwall hipsters would be insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. No, that's that's super cool. So you, you're both going and indulging your vice. Mm -hmm. So um, let's have a quick look at uh, vice. So when you indulge your vice, uh, you are rolling your worst, um, your weakest um, attribute. So you make an attribute roll based on your, your weakest one, the one with fewest dice, um, mm -hmm. and you clear an amount of stress equal to your, uh, to your dice roll. So um, because you may be rolling um, a zero, it'll be your, your lowest one or whatever the die roll um, manifests as. If you, if you clear more stress than you have, you overindulge, and uh, we can get into that because we definitely will 
see an overindulgence. <laughs> it's mechanically impossible at this point in time not to. <laughs> um, so uh, three is your worst. Oh, wow. Yep. Because I am... I Two is my worst because this is how I always build my Blades characters for this very reason. Because you get one everywhere in a bunch of different skills and then you get two on each of your resistances which gives you two on your vice rolls that's how i build most of my blades characters and then i get an extra die because i'm oh. indulging with a friend or a contact oh is that a is. thing or is that specifically yep, that's a thing. That? yeah oh, cool. yeah so you will get you will oh, get an additional die as well um so you clear oh. six stress um <laughs> so you have a very good time um Yep. And you overindulge, mm -hmm. and we will see what that looks like. Um, I would like to see you folks describe what exactly like the inside of this club looks like when you're overindulging. Um, and and I'm imagining this is very like art house. Like none of the camera angles or shots in this place make sense or would be allowed in a traditional film school. But um, apparently, we're a very avant garde. TV show, so so fuck it. Um. <laughs> there's like a shot. There's like a shot of like some just someone's like leg from the knee down, then like half of someone's face, but like at a really weird angle. And it's like a really close up shot, so you just see like really fine detail, <laughs> but it's like bathed in shadow as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's, that's kind of what I'm imagining. Uh, so let's let's see your your roll. Oh yeah, I should roll. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay. Uh, so I got one bonus dice, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, Sabine. I also overindulge. Excellent. So you, you do clear everything, uh, which is good, um, but you are <laughs> overindulging. Um, so, so you both do, which is fantastic, because that just means I can read this out for you folks, and, uh, and, and it's applicable to everyone in the scene. Um, Good life choices. <laughs> so, uh, when you're overindulge, you make uh, a bad call because of your vice in acquiring it or while under its influence. I think that this is under its influence uh, in some manner, like in the club, probably. Uh, to bring the effect uh, of this bad decision into the game, select an overindulgence from the list. So, there are four options. You attract trouble. Uh, you select or roll an additional engagement. Um, you brag uh, about your exploits, you get an additional two heat. Um, lost, your character vanishes for a few weeks. You play a different character until this one returns from their bender. Uh, when your character returns, they've also healed any harm they had. Uh, and the last one is tapped. Your current purveyor cuts you off. Find a new source of your vice. And that will actually have to become like uh, a fact of play. Like you'll have to uh, work towards finding a new vice purveyor. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, so, there's, you said you get XP from overindulging, um, is that right, Lavender? Just, like, at the end of the session. Right, okay, yeah, because you can oh, express your, yeah. um, your, oh, your, yeah, your yeah, make trouble because you've got your vice, cool. Um, so, do either of you have, um have like an idea on how uh, this manifests and which overindulgence uh, option you want to take? Yeah, they're pretty rough because Attract Trouble is rolling again on the Entanglement. It and is, And we yeah. just kind of discussed that like one of the Entanglements is one that like doesn't really make sense in terms of the story. Oh, but Flip Door Interrogation could be good. Um, yeah. Or we could get Double Demon, you know, shenanigans. Um, I'm, I'm kind of keen to go for that. Oh, but bragging could also be good. Bragging is um, fun. Bragging is bragging really like, fun. Bragging makes sense in the context of we just successfully like mm -hmm. did our thing. Um, you will be wildly yeah. close to a wanted level, yeah. uh, which is cool. <laughs> like, I like that. Like, you, you folks are really playing fast and loose. Um, Look, I'm just saying, mm. if we pick double bragging, if we double brag, <laughs> then that puts us over the edge, which puts our wanted to one, but it sets our heat back to one. <laughs> yeah. So then we wouldn't have to do all that reducing. That's a that's a that's a devilish position. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A devil's bargain, one might say. <laughs> <laughs> 
nobody ever takes those. It's that's <laughs> that's actually, pretty clever though. Me. Like because it means that you don't have to waste precious downtime actions on on uh, reducing your heat, right? Yeah. <laughs> But, so what are, what are the effects of having wanted it's we would roll an extra dice uh, or we would, like roll an extra dice when we're rolling entanglement so, yeah so you, you yeah you would roll one die instead of um, zero uh, um, are there other consequences and can we lose that point of wanted uh, oh, by getting arrested right that, yeah like, yeah yep. someone has to spend okay. time um, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's it's In pretty theory, bad the police come after you harder but yeah. um, there's no like a direct mechanical shortcut for how they chase you down okay. faster. So, I mean, I'm I'm up for that then. If, if you if how do you how do you like everyone else? How does everyone else feel about um, yeah. that? Um, I just want to ask to make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way that you can drop your wanted level is for someone to uh, do time. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Jeez. Yes, yeah, someone will have to do time. Um, not necessarily, like, it is it is possible that you just stay at one forever, right? Like, it, you don't necessarily need to do time, but if you want to reduce it, someone has to do time. Mm -hmm. um, and one to level one, if someone does go to prison during that, um, they are in prison for a month or two. Um, okay. So it's it's not like... It's not ridiculous, but it is still significant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, so what are I the, mean, the other? All of those other options are very like, like getting an additional entanglement is like a big deal. I don't really feel like losing this character at yeah, the moment. Yeah, like yeah, normally totally. I can burn mm. through characters a bunch of times, but I feel like the culture of this particular Blades of Game mm. we're very attached to these characters. So I feel like as a group, Lost isn't a thing that we do so sure. mm -hmm. much. Um, and I also like this vice a lot. So I feel like the only mm. choice that I like is the additional the... 2D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair, cool. I mean, I'm happy to go with it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that all kind of makes sense. Hmm. <laughs> it's terrifying, but it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's cool. do it. Yeah. So cool. you take four heat, um, which mm -hmm. wraps around and goes to one heat, and you've gained oh one wanted. Um, so what does this look like? The two of you overindulging to the point of you bragging about what you've just done, um, the highly, <laughs> highly illegal things that you've just done. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, are we like, like bragging to like a secret police officer or something, like who's infiltrating this like underground art scene, or like, um, uh, or do we just like bring a bunch of our like magazines and like start giving them out here, and it's the wrong vibe for it? Yeah, maybe. I um, like that. Another thing I want to do is, like, well, we're, like, double bragging, so, like, we could <laughs> get in, like, different kinds of trouble, which mm. that's probably <laughs> the thing. Um, I want to involve my new haunted trauma some way in this, mm. which, since we're listening to ghost music, I feel like makes sense. Mm. Um, maybe I can put the cause of my bragging behind the fact that something about this music once it gets to like its sixth iteration of like funneling musical reverberations through a harp something just clicks in Stavril and they flip back into their um pre church preceptor personality oh. and start like To like make a scene about how this is heretical and like oh shit pulling people over and like saying that there's problems with this sort of devilish music oh my god literally consorting with devils and using 
dark arcane powers just for your own like casual entertainment. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to get some ideas on the entanglement as well. So. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. I will be right back. Yeah. No worries. Um, all right. What are you What are you feeling like, Melody? Um, how does uh... How does Sabine uh, overindulge here? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I. Hmm. <laughs> I just saw Luke's thing. You bragged to a ghost. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I think like okay. The thing that jumps to mind is like uh, that, like at this you know underground like rave ghost rave thing. Um, Sabine like bumps into a bunch of like old school Scovlanders like herself and is like you know they end up like having a smoke outside um and you know she's like high from like the dancing and that kind of thing and like from drinking probably too and she's just like you know yeah, like regaling them with with their, their exploits and then we got kicked out of the the ink rakes because those fucks couldn't take the heat <laughs> and like you know some of them are like yeah great and like there's at least one guy at like the edge of the group who's like uh mm, well, i mean uh, you're also just yelling on a street right yeah, like <laughs> there are plenty of people who just can hear you right um yeah yeah no i like it's just it like a total lack of subtlety yeah um it's also that sort of like post concert thing. You you probably like are speaking way louder than you should be because like you, your your totally. ears are fucked, right? Um, yeah, I love it. Cool. cool. Excellent. Um, okay, so that's that's one maybe, downtime from both of you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Maybe I'm like I come stomping towards Sabine at the end, and I'm like Sabine. Something's wrong. We're getting out of here, and he's just like in a group of people. And yeah, like, I pull you out. Oh shit! Uh huh. Mm-hmm. What? Okay. What? Like, look. Just what's wrong? Have a drink. It's fine. What are you talking about? This, the medium of this music, I just realized is not of our world. <laughs> yeah, you. You introduced me to this music. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Fuck this world. Um. <laughs> I mean, do we just have a really confused conversation and then leave? Yeah, maybe there's... Or, 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 or do I start going like, it's like you're pretending to be a priest again. You're talking in that funky freaky priest way what the hell <laughs> look that Sorry. was hours ago yeah and everyone's like what does sabine have are we having our first scene of sabine like talking stavril through trauma maybe yeah probably yeah oh yeah it's like if we yeah. have to actually deal yeah with, like, yeah that like and like kind of like yeah going through, like going through the stuff that happened and like that you know yeah. that stuff happened and like it's mm-hmm. we're not there anymore don't mm-hmm. have to be a priest anymore yeah so mm-hmm. i mean that sounds great mm-hmm. totally yeah 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 cool awesome but of course yeah. we're not like especially in a private place so like our like yeah. talking about all this is definitely overheard mm-hmm. maybe yeah, by yeah. ghosts yeah. mm-hmm so i think um as we see you like you know peel off from this scene and 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 start heading away like um sabine calming down uh stavril and and um and moving away from the club um with you know like your friends sabine like standing around kind of like you know wondering what the fuck's going on uh and now like loudly talking about the things you were just talking about um we see like down far down the street like the shots sort of at the side of the building um and uh and several's just come out and and you've had this conversation then um we see like this whole time you're having this conversation there's um far off in the distance we see like you know some people just walking about um then night like you know having a good time um and there's this one figure that like no one no one watching the show has noticed yet right they, they only notice because they go back 
over the episode after it's finished airing and they're like replay this and circle it and people are like you know what the fuck's going on with this character in the back of the scene right we see this one figure um this finely dressed uh person far off in the distance so far away that they're completely shrouded in darkness but we can see like the the loose silhouette of their clothing um they're they're walking towards the camera but they never get closer um so they just they keep doing this like weird. this walk I don't like it. um towards the camera but they just they're always staying the same like you know really small off in the distance um and then when we see you know um Sabine like grab Stavril's uh, hand and and uh draw like several across the camera and off the screen as like that cuts over the figure is significantly closer like twice the size and then they're still like walking towards the camera um yeah. and the shot like lingers on that for like half a second and then then cuts i um, do not like it so um so brandon do you know uh or or alex like if if either of you have an idea of what you want your first um downtime action to be sure yeah, um, I wanted to jump in for Brandon because I thought of a really good contrast between that crazy um, scene that's happened in the club and this really quiet, spooky scene that Kane is going through. I think the shot would be very cool to jump in that. Okay. Um, yeah. So Sounds forgive me, I'm kind of new to downtime, so let's work, work through it with me. Um, so I've kind of just thought about what Kane would be feeling like in this downtime, and it's not good as Kane normally feels never really good about anything. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of getting this picture that like Kane is kind of almost guilty and ashamed of how the ghost situation went down. This was mm. supposed to be Kane's speciality. This was supposed to be what Kane was bringing to the group essentially as that kind of like supernatural expert. And because it went kind of sourly, Kane's kind of reflecting on that going like, cause I'm, cause I would assume that Kane is the, the youngest kind of like the rookie almost of this, of this crew, mm. but he's feeling a lot of guilt. He's kind of, he's kind of thinking to himself, look, I should have done better. I'm supposed to be this kind of person. And if I can't even have, you know, Seneca like even be awake during that situation, I'm, it's on me. Um, and so I think it would be appropriate to do an action where I'm indulging my vice and being weird by training. I don't know if that's a thing that I can do. Um, Cause I would think that Kane would want to reflect on the situation and try and like, see like almost kind of like crazily get in a situation it's like i have to i have to control them like I, maybe i should deal with these these nearby ghost pests that have been bothering our like crew station area um and see if i can kind of c try and control them almost to see if he can kind of control himself really like this mm. is kind of like a, a real sense of like self-esteem thing yeah yeah um, yeah and it would look very spooky <laughs> um it would be very uncomfortable um definitely okay yeah i, I mean there are two actions, uh, indulging mm -hmm. vice and, and training, but there's no reason yeah. why we can't, you know, say the two actions occur simultaneously in this, this one act. Like there's no real yeah, reason yeah. why we can't do that. Um, yeah, yeah. Cause it would be the only thing I would do. Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, we'll do train first. Um, so when you spend your time training, you mark one XP on the XP track uh, for an attribute or playbook advance. Uh, if, you if you have the appropriate crew training upgrade unlocked, you can mark an additional one. I don't think you folks have taken that upgrade. That's um, the starting one, I think. Which Don't we one have like resolve? It? Do you have resolve? Um, where is it listed we actually? Got it's under the crew upgrades. Ah, yes, uh, resolve, so, resolve, yeah. Yeah. So that means that if you choose resolve to train, um, you get two XP instead of one for this. Uh, or you That's can get... That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I was going to say, I was actually going to choose something in resolve. I was going to choose command. Okay, so, yeah, so how this works is you yeah. fill in uh, two ticks on the resolve track, um, and, yes. uh, like when that advances then you can put a, uh, a dot in command um okay but cool yeah that makes sense so I, can, I, can, I can i can just do that now yeah yeah absolutely yep just put into um, yeah cool so um, so describe this scene for us let's see okay, uh, so I took what, some notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no go for it 
yeah, cool. So I was thinking about how this would look and I wanted it to be this like really uncomfortable image. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, this crew area has like a bathroom where it has like, you know, a really shabby toilet or sink. And I was thinking of this like really uncomfortable looking claw foot tub. It's clearly just been, it's like, it's got like broken claw foot on the bottom. It's a bit kind of like, looks like it's going to tumble over at any second, kind of, kind of big bathtub. Um, <laughs> And so I was thinking that like Kane would use his uh, Kane implements to create kind of like a ritualistic scene in the bathtub. Um, so Ooh. wait for it. Um, so he's got like all these little ectoplasm vials. They kind of look like spooky moonlit candles. They kind of placed around the bathtub everywhere. And they're kind of mm. giving the whole room like this like blue white glow. Um, and on the walls, there are all these like charcoal ridden symbols and they don't make any any kind of sense to anything, any language that anyone would know. But looking at them, you kind of feel like they sear into your eyeballs. Like they're very prominent and they've like, when you look away, you can kind of see them in your irises. Um, and so Kane is sitting there fully clothed, mind you, in water in the bathtub. So Kane is mm. like, they're, they're, they're clogged down with their cotton shirt and trousers. And they're sort of sitting back because, I mean, Kane's like six foot three. So they're trying to line the bathtub and their knees are like right up. Um, <laughs> it's not enough length unfortunately for Kane to rest comfortably in this bathtub, but they're lying there, knees big, up. Big mood. <laughs> <laughs> um, two, two, two top of the bathtub, so they're lying there. Um, can't imagine that's like I'm five foot two, so. <laughs> um, and they're kind of sitting out and again, their eyes are that sparkling, glowing, eerie eye kind of quality to them. And they're sitting there trying desperately to see if they can commune with the, with the little ghosts that are kind of rolling around out their crew. They're kind of like, they sort of like ragtag ghosts, they're kind of like just essences of spiritual things that have vaguely happened in the past where their essences are still floating around, they're sort of like listless. And Kane wants to try and get a hold of them so that like he can feel like he can command something. And it's this desperate, mm. this is just desperate self-esteem thing. It's like, if I can do this, then I can do more, then I can grow from here. But I've just got to get this down pat. So does does Kane know who these little like Again, echoes, like, right, you know, these little yeah. echo bits of of people. No. So, so they're just, like, you've sourced them from he's, somewhere. He's reaching out, like, he's kind of, like, he's, like, you're tuning into the, like, the situation around him, sees these, yeah. like, hallowed echoes of, like, situations past, doesn't actually know who they are originally, who they were, but wants to try and see if they can control these echoes. Because um, they're kind of, like, they're very... Um, sort of like the machine that we encountered earlier they're kind of like stuck here haunted but only somewhat yeah um and he yeah. kind of wants to like because they seem kind of in his and look what he can think they're kind of semi-harmless sort of like your basic thing that he can control wants to try and get a hold of that cool all right let's uh let's see how your um your indulging vice goes now and yes. uh and then we will see how that because I, I, I have an idea for, for what the scene looks like um, if things right, go poorly. Right. Um, sure. I mean, I, there's a very good chance I overindulge because I have three. Yeah. Um, so, so. so you roll prowess here, um, mm -hmm. and you're doing this alone. So um, you you only roll the one die, and uh, we so will... So rolling prowess, right? Yes. Yeah. So bonus die zero. Five. All right. So you clear all your stress, but you do overindulge. <laughs> do you have an idea of which of those, um, which of those you would like uh, to do? We can get that screen back up so I can see it again. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I just accidentally opened up a whole bunch of stuff, so I closed that. Um, I was, I was thinking about if it did go wrong, what would happen? It was kind of like taps didn't really make any sense i wasn't in, like i was indulging with the spirits it's not like they could suddenly cut me off i don't think that would make sense in terms of kane's abilities and skill um there's no one to brag to except for a bunch of ghosts who don't care uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um so it would only leave me with lost or attract um and kind of attached to kane i could work yeah. in another character um but to, to be honest it makes a lot of sense for kane to attract trouble because he is desperately trying to control things that he doesn't actually know or understand, thinks at their basic level, and thinks he can take it on. So if things go wrong and sour from that, it would make a lot of sense. It would be a track trouble. So if if you are okay with me 
Um, if you are okay with me taking the initiative here and you do want to take <laughs> tapped, I do have an idea, oh. but do not let that um, do not let that okay. sway you. So it, it's it's totally up to you if you want attract trouble. We'll we'll see how that works, uh, or if you want tapped, um, we'll 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 see how Is that plays out. That kind of that makes me go, ooh, I wonder what it could be with tapped, but. I don't which know which how... one's tapped again? That's lost. Uh, no, no. Y your current purveyor cuts you off. You find a new source oh. for your vice. Yeah. I mean, that could be that could be cool, especially because you're now like you're having these kind of like guilty, complicated feelings about ghost stuff. Yeah. If you then like for whatever reason got cut off more from that, that would like intensify it. Mm. Um, this is like statistically fairly unlikely, but if you took the getting in trouble one, we were all entanglements again. Theoretically, we could end up with two separate demons <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> but we would have to we would have to roll correctly. <laughs> um, I so, don't think so because we have to since we went over our oh yeah, brackets, it's actually oh. in the bracket now. That's roll, true. Yeah. We're in the zero to three bracket. So our, our new options three. now: gang trouble or the usual suspects, rivals or unquiet dead. Uh, or cooperation, um, and... I'm quite dead. Yeah. Would be very appropriate for what's going on here. So... Um, what was the other one, sorry? What was the smaller role? Um... Back up again. Uh, gang trouble, uh, which, you know, is, is fair enough. Uh, rivals? Our cohort. Yeah. yeah. Um, so someone's pissed off that I'm riling a bunch of spirits in the neighborhood. Uh, rivals would be a neutral faction, throws their weight around, they threaten you, etc. Um, and uh, the usual suspects is the blue coats grab someone in the periphery of your crew um, and they basically like rough them up a bit. Um, mm. uh, and cooperation is um, a plus three satisfaction asks you for a favor. Um, if you agree to do it, um, you you then basically that's your next score, um, okay. or maybe depending on what their favor is, they ask of you. Um, okay. Hmm. This decision is quite difficult. I'm seeing like there's a spooky thing I'm seeing where like Kane could potentially be in, like lose their supernaturalness and any kind of thing we do off that, which honestly I'm fine with. I think that's that's fantastic. I think there are interesting things to happen in a track with track trouble, especially with if I roll a four or five. Um, yeah. I, I kind of want to box around a bit uh, more. I'm, yeah. I don't want to make this decision yet. I kind of, I don't know. Now, now that I know that you are dealing with a different bracket, I kind of want you to attract trouble now, um, <laughs> but you know. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to sit on? Do you want to sit on that that discuss like that? Um, yeah. Uh, what you want to do, and then we can see how that manifests. Um, and we'll do, um, we'll do Seneca's first downtime, and then we can like bounce back to that. Leave if you call that. Yeah, sure. We can leave Kane just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you like. The bathtub. It's black, by the way. The water is pitch black. Oh, so I was actually going to suggest, because of like how um, Duskwall's sea works, I was going to suggest that it's like clear water, but then when you dip underneath it, it's all black around you. But like if it's just already black, like that's that's perfect. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that, right? Um, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. It's, oh, super gross. I. Me and Kane so wouldn't get on. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we just we we, we live in very different circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very unusual stuff. Um, beautiful. Okay, Seneca, what are you doing? What's your first um, hmm. action? So I kind of have a good sense of everything that I want to happen. Mm -hmm. Um. So I know. First things first. I want to take a long-term project. Yeah, cool. Oh, cool. Uh, like, okay, so let me tell you, like, I'm, I'm going to set the scene. Um, Seneca was brought back to the uh, base, knocked out. Mm -hmm. And, like, he just bolts upright. Um, she's, like, by the press like sleeping by the, by the press alone um he can hear things happening in the bathroom doesn't know they are <laughs> um and 
like she's like processing what happened because she can still vividly remember this thing. Mm. Her trauma is obsessed, by the way. You can guess with what. And mm. you can like she figures at this moment, you know what? I don't want to deal with this right now. So she starts like taking lots of notes on Master Slain because that's one of the news pieces she wanted to work on for the paper. Mm-hmm. Because like she she's like, I'm just gonna figure out how we're gonna at, at, um, attack this story and start working on this as soon as possible. Uh, maybe thinking about this right now will make me forget about whatever the fuck happened. <laughs> um, and that fucking way how that was. At what the hell was that? And just as like she has like maybe. 14 pages of handwritten <laughs> notes and then she pauses for a moment and goes yeah this is not helping <laughs> um i need to see nyrex and now she's going to indulge in her vice oh okay cool. okay so we're doing an indulge vice and then you're planning on doing a long-term project after that is that the um right so here is here is a, an organizational question. Okay, yeah. Um, if I, because it is statistically likely that I'm going to overindulge in my vice. Uh, you have zero stress. So yes, it is. <laughs> um, if I become lost, does the clock on a long-term project that Seneca started pause until he returns. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's... Hmm. Um, the, another option is you can just go hang out with Nyrex. Like, it doesn't have... It, you can just, like, hang out with people. It doesn't necessarily have to be indulging a vice. Yeah. I mean, it can be, but, like, it doesn't have to be. It, it's it's Seneca. It has. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think like just point of order in this game. Um, m- mechanically, I think um, indulging in vice is a strange one for Seneca because I think all actions, regardless of what they are, are indulging vice for Seneca. So, um, <laughs> uh, and most of the time you're overindulging. <laughs> Um, I'm fine with that though. That's great. That's that's how I like my blades. Um. <laughs> because like I have, essentially, I have the whole thing planned out. I know exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Cool. Um. So. Uh, she goes to see Nyrex, mm-hmm. and like in the back of her mind, she's still like remembering the ghost shit that happened. <laughs> And she doesn't know why in this moment she's drawn even more to see Nyrex. I mean, she she really likes Nyrex. She likes spending time with her. Mm. But in this moment, it feels kind of addictive, and she likes it. Okay. Um. And while they're having sex, she at some point notices. Wait. This feels weird, and I don't know why, but I enjoy it. Like okay. she feels like she feels like she's literally like losing her corporeality as they're having sex. Okay, it's like a very special feeling for her in that moment. So like, Nyrex is is still. Like, Nyrex left a mark on you in some way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's that's cool. All right, let's 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 see. Um, let's see. I mean, technically, you do have to do uh, um, an overindulge roll. Um, so, sorry, uh, um, indulge vice roll. But, um, yeah, do... do let's, uh, let's see that now. Um, let's so, just watch the roll. Yeah. Let's see... Inevitable happen. So it's bonus dice zero. Oh uh, no, bonus dice one because you're using one of your contacts here. Ah yes. Um, which is a very 
interesting um, combination when one of your contacts is your vice purveyor, but it also is bad news if you ever have to choose to lose, like to tapped. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see that roll. Oh. Oh, I mean, you gave it your best shot to not overindulge, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but sadly, it was impossible. Um, uh, okay. I actually like that from a narrative four, perspective. Four. Yeah, yeah. I love that from a narrative perspective. I wish I had a good place to roll. Because Tanika is like, this is, this is, this is fucked up. Yeah. This is fucked up. This yeah, is yeah. fucked up. Um, yeah. But. Okay. At... Right. And Seneca is lost. Seneca is lost. Okay. <gasps> Do you know, um, we're going to, we're going to go on break in a second. Um, uh, so that, that's a good chance for you to quickly create a new character, uh, and, and bring that character in for, um, uh, for the second half of, of the, the session. Um, but do you want to quickly describe how Seneca becomes lost in this state? I have an idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear it, because yes. maybe, it, it, maybe it's close to mine. Okay. It might be. Um, is the character you're coming back to us with Nyrex? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Is it Nyrex in Seneca's body? <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It's like... Nyrex, uh, Seneca that's... just shows up and is like, Sup, sup folks, I'm not Seneca. That's... Uh, that's... Had... Can you... Can you... I had thought of that. How is that gonna like, kill you with Kane? You're literally my rival. That's a bit <laughs> fucked up. I kinda like that. Um... <laughs> it was it was one of the things that I thought of. Not in Seneca's oh. body though. Wow. Yeah. But that is a thing that I thought of. I was thinking it was either Nyrex or oh, another no. <laughs> uh, another sex another worker mm. at that uh brothel who is, like, closely aligned with Nyrix and knows that she's a ghost and is coming specifically to taunt Kane. Oh. <laughs> so, um. Okay, so, so is this how this loss will work? Well, essentially, Cynic is going to time out from their body for a while and Nyrix is going to come into play in Cynic's body and that's going to be how that happens? I, how uh, did that happen? Yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. <clears throat> Um, like, a- absolutely, I don't see why not. Um, I mean, Nyrix is, is an NPC at the moment, but there's no real reason why you can't control Nyrix. Uh, I think that that's awesome. Like, that's... Because, that's, I mean, and the good thing is we don't know that much about Nyrix yet, right? Like, we don't know really anything yeah. about Nyrix. So this is a great opportunity was... to explore that. Yeah. Because that was the other yeah. thing that I wanted to I, I wanted to ask whether it would be okay mm. if most of everything related to Narex was secret from the rest of the group. Oh, okay. If if everyone in the like if my my general rule with secrets uh, in play is that I'm happy for them to exist so long as they exist to be discovered, right? Like. They exist yeah. with the knowledge that the rest of the players will discover um, this secret throughout the course of play, and um, and we don't play defensively with them, right? Like we play to figure out when they should be revealed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if that's uh, the the other way that I like to do secrets um, is that they are um, open to the players, but secret from the characters, right? So. Uh, we sort of play along that line, and then everyone can engage with the um, the dramatic irony of like something occurring on screen when we know that it's bullshit, right? Or we know that um, it it's it's an uh, like a, a an out and out lie. Um, that's entirely up to the four of you. I I do not mind how you want to manifest that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you, you can if if you folks are, are happy with it, we can do just straight secrets um but yeah those are just the two that i've found are the most fun to play with 
cool. That works like for me. I absolutely love the fact that we're going to figure out more about Nyrex through Secrets that will come to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I also want to make something pretty clear about sort of Kane's ethics with demon, uh, with Ghost Possession, which um, is to say, first and foremost, it doesn't actually make logical sense. It's a, it's a prejudice, essentially. Okay. Um, Kane doesn't think it's fair for ghosts to possess humans when ghosts, like, he doesn't consider them to be kind of like of the same brain. He really believes that because he's felt goats' presence, he's interacted with goats, that they are like these balling things of spiritual emotion and don't have a lot of presence of mind to make rational decisions or to do things um, in accordance to without that and doesn't think that that's on the same president as humans. So he thinks that's okay for humans to control ghosts because they have that presence of mind and not vice versa. He thinks it's like really morally corrupt to let that emotions affect humans. Mm, that's um, interesting. And that's a, that's a prejudice that Cain has. It's not a fair one. It's one that doesn't make a lot of yeah. rational sense that goes with what Cain's experience with ghosts. Um, and so that's really important to clarify coming into like, you know, interactions with Nyrix that Cain is going to seem like a bit of a butthead and, and he is in a situation. Mm, um, yeah. If there's any kind of, if there's any kind of chance where like Nyrex needs to defend themselves, etc., etc., Kane will bite that bullet. He he will make his position really clear, um, and it's not good. <laughs> so, oh, what was that? We uh, we quickly just lost um, Brandon's uh, camp, but all good. Um, <laughs> oh no! Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no, that that's that's cool. Um, I I am actually kind of excited to see. Like to to be surprised with what um, what you do, Brandon. Like how you want to go about your your new character. So um, we're gonna break for like ten minutes. Sure. Uh, we'll come back at before we break. Yeah. Before we break, I just want to like visually set the very last moment of yeah, sure. um, Seneca's scene, which is um, just as they uh, both climaxed. You see uh, Nyrix lean over uh, Seneca as, like, her eyes are closed. Like, she, her head is, like, rolled back in ecstasy. And Nyrix just smiles very sinisterly. Cut. Oh. Ah, cool. That's, oh, okay. I don't know how I feel about Nyrix anymore. I'm excited to find <laughs> out how I should feel about Nyrix. Um, uh... Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, so we will be back. Um, we will be back at eight forty-five, which gives us like eight minutes of break. Brandon, if you want to work on um, uh, on your new character sheet, I don't know how that really will work, given you're using the same character but a different um, spirit. Um, I am. I will leave that in your hands. Um, if you want to make a mm -hmm. new character completely, um, or if you want to keep the same character but like um figure out I something to, weird like i want to keep the same character with some minor um shifts okay in some things i think you can just make a copy of your character sheet and then um uh we I, can that's like what I'm curious about. yeah um so there is another thing where i mean technically nyrix is a ghost and there is a ghost playbook there is that's true that is true. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to duplicate. Um, so um, there is now a uh, a character which is copy of Seneca um, in the the characters, and uh, feel free to edit that as uh, as you will. Um, ah, thank you. And uh, and have have fun. Um, okay, so uh, we will we will see you, folks um in like six and a half minutes all right see you then and in the meantime enjoy lavender's excellent music uh i love it and i'm kind of sad that it is muted for me because i need to run the stream um, yeah. uh awesome all right see you soon